Okay, we are recording. Hi and welcome to Carbon Lee High Intermediate Units 12 Days of Learning series. This is the ninth day of learning and we will be talking about quiz and game websites. This session will be recorded for playback later on. My name is Amanda David. I am one of the educational consultants here at the IEO. Hi, my name is Katie Tully. I am one of the facilitators for the IU. Welcome. We're just going to talk to you guys about some review games and things that you can do, whether you are face to face or at a distance, just to enhance your students learning. Today, we're going to be talking about four different platforms, Mentimeter, Kahoot, Quizlet and Quizzes. All right, so to get things started, we are going to talk about Mentimeter. If you haven't ever heard of it, it's actually really awesome. Uh, it's really an easy to use program uh, that you can use to create really awesome and fun interactive presentations. You can use it at events, lectures with your class. It, it's very innovative and memorable. You may have seen them used in presentations that you participated at the IU through Patton. Um, so it could be something that you've experienced in your professional development, but it definitely is transferable into the classroom. There's one available right here that we can use in practice that if the if you were just to click on it right here. You adjust what's your favorite holiday and you see at the top it says go to menti.com and use this code. So then you would put in. So I'm going to do that on the back end real quick and put in the code. What's my favorite holiday treat? I have lots of favorite holiday treats, but I will just pick this one. And I there were options for me to put, but I just clicked the one. And so 100% of our choices were cookies. Now, if there were more than one participant, you would get to see all of the different options um, displayed on the screen and you can choose more than just a pie chart you can you can choose any number of different ways to display the information and uh it, it's really a quite comprehensive program for for students and for for teachers to use really um worth looking into so if we were to go back to the oh wait there's another one hold on my oh, favorite wait, holiday one. song <gasps> i get oh so here we go my favorite holiday song Nobody's going to know this one. So this will be actually nice for you so you can do a little research on this song. You can see you can either keep or hide the image. This is nice so that students aren't influenced. I'm a Christmas tree. It's from Dr. Demento. I have no idea. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Life was interesting where I grew up in New Jersey, you know? <laughs> uh, so with talking about Mentimeter, it's really great to use live or asynchronous. So you could share out that code and your students could work on these surveys while at home with family or independently, which is great. You could do it like we're just doing right now live. Uh, it's very easy to use. As you could see, I was able to just log in, type in the code and get, get things rolling right away. Um, and as long as the students or whoever it is that you're, you know, having participate is able to type in the numbers or has someone there to do that, it's it's super easy to access. The code does expire after a few days, so if you're you know providing the assignments ahead of time, you want to make sure that you don't activate or start this one until right before you want your students to participate in that. And once you create a few, then you're going to have to sign up because that's really how you get like the depth and breadth of information. So uh, it is definitely worth looking into 
check out the free version and, um, you know, see if it's something that you're interested in. Next, we have Kahoot, which is a pretty popular platform. It is a quiz. It's essentially a quiz game show. You can have multiple choice. You can have true false students use their own devices. Um, whether you're using Chromebooks in your classroom or if you are at a distance, you can have students use their cell phones or their laptops or their tablets. This can be completed live or at a student paced presentation. And here is one. Let's see. Oh no, what do you mean? It's I know it's my coot. See, this is the problem with technology. Um, let's see. Login. Well, I think that's actually kind of a nice feature of Kahoot is sometimes if you're if you're doing some kind of private survey, the the nice thing about it is you can create private ones. They're not all public. I like that yes. feature. All right. Here we go. The competitive person in me really likes Kahoot. I do as well. I wonder if I use my personal. One nice thing about Kahoot, actually I'll go back, is that you can, we have technology. So my cahoots, Let's see if it pops up. Here it is. Okay, so we can play my cahoot and we'll do it as if we're in a virtual classroom. So we'll just let me just start. No, we have to have friends log in. Okay. So if I go in, I'm gonna go in through my phone. Oh, we have Katie. You know what? We can start. Yeah. All right, Katie, get ready. These I'm are hard. Ready. Katie, how many months are in a year? Great job. And you you can see you can also integrate um, your Bitmoji. So if you have fans of Bitmoji in your classroom, those are always fun to have. And on, on my end, I'm not seeing all of that information. I'm just seeing the colors with the shapes, which is nice for our students who are early readers. You know, it, it's, it's really accessible for all grade levels. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> incorrect. Womp womp. <laughs> Not the best year ever. It could have been, it could have been Jack Skellington. I'm just going to say. It could have been. It could have been. It was a trick question. See, it was. I, I'm going to, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay. I'm just going to full honesty there. Okay. What movie is this song from? Let's see if I can hear. Here's what's great. You can add videos. I can't hear anything. No. Oh, wait. Nope. So I'm just going to guess. I'm going to guess that one. It was making ah. Christmas. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Love it. Oh, um, I don't know. I'm going to say that. Man, I am really not doing very well. 
However, I'm still the winner, so. You, you're always a winner to me. Appreciate that. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yay, great job. <laughs> also nice, I, I really like that, you know, personally, yeah. because now it's showing me that and I'm very nicely reinforced. Sometimes not so awesome in our ES classrooms, but yes. you know. Leave my, all right. Some of the pros and cons to using Kahoot. There are a few. Um, and I, I pretty much talked about the pros already. You can do this live very synchronous. It's very user friendly. Like Katie said, when the students are looking at it, they're not getting all of the data that I'm getting on my screen. They're just getting their multiple choice options, which are typically shapes and colors. So for those non readers or those who are not confident with their reading, it's it puts a lot of pressure off of them. Um, Again, easy access and the reports are available for free, which is really nice. The downfall is, is that if you want some of the really cool features of Kahoot, you do have to pay for it. Check with your district to see if your district already has an account because some districts do. Um, otherwise you can get your own personal um, login and access through your own account. And because it's, that free option is very limiting. You don't get a lot of variety with questions and you also have a limited amount of access to the report. So you can get kind of just a basic understanding of how your students did. But if you wanted a deeper dive, you would have to have the paid subscription. Next is Quizlet. So for Quizlet, what I like is it's a little different. So there are games that can be completed, but there's also flashcards. There's a flashcard component for vocab and for concept. I'm going to click on my Quizlet here, hopefully. Okay, so I was an ELA teacher in my previous life. So I pulled up my, and I want to upgrade my account. That is one drawback is that um, Quizlet does ask you a lot to upgrade, which can get annoying. Um, so for here, I have my flashcard, so alliteration, I click on it, it flips onto the back and gives me the definition, and then I can go to the next one. You can either have it like this, you can have it as full screen, so it's a bit bigger. You can shuffle the flashcards so that they're not in order. This is great as a review. What I also like is that you can have these as a center if you were in person or as an independent activity. You could go to the learn feature, which has the definition, and then you can click on the word. Oh, that one's not right. I should study this one, which is great. Back, there's a write feature. And it's not really writing, <laughs> it's typing. But looking at the definition, if you know what it is, you would type it in. If the student doesn't know, they can click I don't know, and it will tell you. And then it has the student talk and type at. Okay. And then it tracks the amount correct and incorrect. You can do a vocabulary test on here. You can also play a match game. Make everything disappear and you would click on, let's see, comparison between two unlike things. I can draw. Let's see. Wow. It goes like that, then you're timed. Try to beat the clock. Gravity is a game. Protect the planets from incoming asteroids. Let's get started. We'll go with easy. It's early in the morning. Mm -hmm. Watch out for red asteroids. If you miss a term twice, they will destroy your planet. Oh, that would have helped. 
Oh, see, that's really long. Too early for me. And then there's a live game. Okay, pros and cons. So there are upgrade options to Quizlet. Like I said, it constantly asks you to upgrade. Like every time you log on, it's like, do you want to upgrade? Um, which is kind of annoying. It is user friendly. You just have to kind of click around a little bit. There are different platforms. So again, you can either study flashcards, you can quiz, you can play games. There's, there's lots of options. And if you are utilizing Google Classroom, this is an assignment that's easily shared. Um, the con being that this is mostly rote skills. So we're not looking at a deep understanding or application of vocabulary terms. Primarily, you know, it's mostly utilized for you to regurgitate a definition. So if you're looking for, you know, a deep understanding of content, this would not be the ideal platform. And the upgrade is somewhat expensive. The other platforms we're talking about today, it, it's not too costly if, you know, as teachers, we opt sometimes to pay for things out of pocket. Um, this would be one I would be hesitant to do just because it is pretty expensive to upgrade. Okay, so moving right along, here is Quizzes. Quizzes is, is a really nice program. It's a lot like a game show. It's, it is similar to Kahoot. Uh, it's nice because you can use it on the web and you can also download their app. So if you have students that are using iPads, they can download the app and participate that way, or you can just have them access it via the website. Uh, it's pretty cool as well. You can integrate it with Google Classroom. If you're using Remind, you can use it through there as well. Uh, it, it definitely is very similar though to Kahoot. You, you have to create an account. Um, and there is an access code as well, which is, you know, I think nice because if you're participating in an activity as a group, you don't want other people to be able to necessarily like jump into it. Um, and again, it's, it's a competitive activity. Students can do the quiz all together and see the progress, or you can do this as a homework assignment and the students can do it on their own. And it, it kind of moves along the progress bar as the students answer their question, as it answer the questions. I think we have one that we can show yeah. you. I'm trying to, come on, exit, no. <laughs> I'm trying to, my like slide bar is right where the link is. The cool thing about it is it it's, it looks a lot like memes. And so students also can create avatars. So it looks a little bit different from quiz games and makes it a lot more fun and student friendly. Uh, so you can turn the meme option off if you want to, to, to get like kind of eliminate some of the extraneous feedback if you need it to just be less, less noise, I guess you could say. But I think it makes it a lot more reinforcing for your students. So you would go to this website, which I will do. Oh, I'm doing quiz. it right now. Okay. So then you right. do that and I'll just keep talking. Enter my quiz .com, you put your code in and there are different parts of the, the setup you can do. You can you know, put time allowed. You can vary the number of choices. You can let your students see their results. You can let them retake the quiz. And you can also actually set up um, parent reports. So after the student completes the assignment, you can have a, an email get kicked out to parents so they can see how their students did. So just so you know, as a student, it's coming up like this. Let's see, what is the name of the reindeer that leads Santa's sleigh? I believe that is Rudolph. And so on the teacher end, this is what you see or, and you can project this up on your board so students are not necessarily seeing the questions in front of them on the big board, but they're seeing them in front of them on their screen. Am I most excited for about break? Sleeping. Hmm. I think if you click on questions, you might be able to see, yep. LIU is located in Easton, New York City, Philadelphia, or Schnecksville. I believe it's Schnecksville. Schnecksville. Last question, name a holiday that occurs in December. Uh, 
Nice job. So I think the best way to use this program is for recall and maybe prep for tests. It's definitely nice, as I said, for in-class review or maybe homework. Uh, I don't know that you necessarily want to present new information through here. It's definitely better to uh, reinforce, reteach, readdress um, some things that you've presented to students already. But it is very easy to use for sure. Um, and again, just as we had talked about earlier with some of our other programs, you can do this live, you can do this asynchronously. Um, the only thing is, and I think we sort of saw that a little bit, is there's like a little tiny bit of a lag, but um, not a huge one. And I've, I've heard that it's, rel it's relatively easy for our students who are using an iPad to accidentally click the wrong answer. Um, I don't think that Mandy experienced that, but we might have like our students who have like tiny little fingers just kind of jamming onto the answer and accidentally getting the wrong one. So that's that. That's what we got for, for you for there. So some extra resources. Uh, these are just a few links that you can check out. Um, and if you're interested, the first one is a link to, I believe it's to Common Sense media and it's a listing basically of um, the best quiz and game show apps for classrooms that have been rated by educators by individuals whose job it is 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 basically to evaluate websites um, and technology they'll give you the pros the cons basically what the bottom line is how you can use it in your classroom what students will like about it and they typically give it a, a score out of 10. Um, so that's a very helpful website to visit. The second one is, is Sporkle quizzes for kids. When I taught, we used Sporkle all the time. And it is something that you would create an account for yourself. And you could potentially create an account for your students if you wanted to challenge them or have them challenge each other. And um, it, it's, it's trivia, basically. I mean, you could have them do review and you could create your own, but I, I like it basically for the fun review stuff. Like we, around like the close to break, we would go in and do holiday review or movie review or sports review, just kind of fun end of the year, um, relaxing stuff. And then again, this other one, this game show classroom comparing Kahoot quizzes, Quizit Live and GimKit. It's another, basically, I wanna say this is also a common sense link. Uh, I'm a huge fan of commonsense.org because I think you're going to find really well vetted information. So if you're not sure about what program you should choose, head to Common Sense and you're going to probably get some good information from them. Um, so those are just some additional resources for you to check out. And um, our information is there. I'm going to kick it back over to Mandy. And that's pretty much it for us. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. I put our emails up on the screen. And um, thank you for stopping by, checking out our resources, and we hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, bye.